I want you to close your eyes for a second and imagine a bowler running into you. As you think about that, I can already guess what you're seeing. Most of the bowlers will be right arm. There'll be a few spinners in there and a few of you might think about left arm baseball. But my guess is that most of you just saw a right arm seam bowler. This is the last knock, which comes the first knock. Take road. And that's because at the professional level of cricket, that's what more than 50% of deliveries are made of. And I'm thinking that almost none of you saw a left arm wrist spinner. Put it this way, when a young South African spinner was coming through the system, he bowled left arm wrist spin because his hero was Shane Warne. But his coaches told him that left arm wrist spinners turned the ball into right handers. And that wasn't the best option. The better option would be left arm finger spin because that ball went the other way. That cricketer, as you may have guessed, was Robin Peterson. Look, it worked out well for him, but I do wonder how many left arm wrist spinners have been dissuaded by coaches who thought they spun it the wrong way. And you will notice that I'm using left arm wrist spinner here instead of the old term. And that's because that old term is often incorrectly attributed to Alice Achong, a bowler of Chinese ethnicity who dismissed Walter Robbins and the phrase sort of took flight from there. Except it didn't. The racial term was used for almost 10 years before that in Yorkshire. And it's simple to say that those were different times, except the Yorkshire Post wrote this in 1934. The Chinese regard the word Chinaman as derogatory, and it should therefore be avoided. So it is incredible that the term stayed around for this long. But I do believe that part of the reason it hung around for so long is that people didn't actually face that kind of bowling that much. It was just never a term that needed to be mentioned that much in cricket because there was practically none of them around. In test cricket, there is only one bowler, Paul Adams, with more than 100 wickets using this skill. This is the list of all the left arm wrist spinners ever. In pink is the slow left arm orthodox. In blue is the left arm unorthodox or wrist spin. I mean, come on, this is kind of funny at this point. So I have proved that they don't exist much in test cricket. And what about T20? Well, in internationals over the last five years, there have just been over 2,000 balls bowled of left arm wrist spin which is 1.7% of all deliveries. That number is exactly the same for domestic T20 as well. It used to be far lower, but there has been a boom. Well, I mean, not a boom, but there was like none, and now there's some. Of course, one bowler can change that pretty massively on their own. There have been nine bowlers at the international level as specialist left arm wrist spinners in the last five years, and four of them have bowled more than 100 balls. Tabray Shamsi has delivered over 1,000. He has delivered 45% of all left arm wrist spin at the international level of cricket in the last five years. Meaning that without him, there would be less than 1% of this being bowled in international cricket. Shamsi does bowl a lot for South Africa. In fact, he just bowls a lot. Last five years, he's delivered the third most balls in T20 internationals. And I think this is where it gets real fun. Because with him, you have the kind of bowling you are least likely to face but the one guy who bowls it more than almost anyone else bowls anything else. How do you prepare to face Shamsi? Any net bowler good enough to replicate him is probably already playing at the top level. So the only way to get used to facing him is to face him when it matters the most, which is lucky for you because that's kind of when you're going to face him a lot. There's always something weird with left arm wrist spinners. Like when Kuldeep Yadav ripped through England a couple of years ago. At the time, England had almost no players who had faced left arm wrist spin at all. The main left arm wrist spinners in England in that period were two Aussies with less than 50 combined wickets in, in that competition. And one of them was Brad Hogg. And all of this is why Brad Hogg could have a remarkably unlikely successful comeback. T20 cricket basically rewards bowlers who can deceive or do something weird. Left arm wrist spinners do both. They can turn it either way and you just can't get used to them. It's a hell of a skill set. And that is why so many of them do so well. They spin the ball back into right-handers, which shouldn't work, but they keep taking wickets. This is all the bowlers who have delivered more than 250 balls of left arm wrist spin in T20 cricket in the last five years. You can see that none of them have terrible averages. They basically all take wickets. The only real difference here is that Shamsi takes a lot of wickets. And for international cricket, he's also managed to be very frugal, which not all the left arm wrist spinners are. And that's what he did again in this match. He came on and he gutted Sri Lanka's middle order. He was good enough to keep the chase down to something that South Africa could well, just reach. But the thing is, even in this game, he didn't look like the best spinner, let alone the best wrist spinner. Hasaranga was incredible and completely on top of his bowling. He looked like a leg spinning alpha predator. In comparison, Shamsi looked almost docile. And he almost always does, just 
generally loading up his left arm spin in a friendly kind of way. But as almost always happens with him, the batters were lulled into losing their wickets in a you know fairly large amount. So Hasaranga ended his vicious spell with 3 for 20. Shamsi floated in with 3 for 17. And South Africa won by a ball. 